Hello everybody, welcome to Wide Family Farm. Today I'm going to show you how I'm going to deadhead some flowers and I'm going to take you on a little tour of my birds because I haven't really done that pretty much all summer. So come along with me. Okay, so we're getting down to, you know, the last few days of summer here. Um, I think September 20th is the last day. So I'm just going to take you on a little garden tour and um, it's really kind of early in the morning here. So the sun's not out yet. It's kind of cool. Grass is still damp. Um, but I thought it would just be important to show you some things that are, that are going on. So let me take you there. It's been a minute since I've done a garden tour or anything like that. Nasturtium, um, is usually like one of the last things to go. Uh, nasturtium and marigolds are my last like flower to go. Um, and I really am grateful for that because, um, the bees love them. The bee, the bees love nasturtium and they're usually, um, oh, there's one right now. Um, they're usually like all over them. So, um, I do have a small rose bush in here. It's right there. And then I have a really big one here and I only got a few flowers on it. It's blooming twice this year. Um, a lot of things are happening this year. Um, and a lot of things are blooming twice. My mom said she has an azalea bush that is blooming again. And they usually only bloom like one time and that's in the spring. So there's just some weird things going on this year, garden wise. So I'm going to lock this gate behind me. Um, my garden is kind of just, we kind of just let it go. <laughs> so there's just like a lot of things that are kind of messy, but oh my gosh, I have valerian root growing down there. Look at that. Um, I had planted valerian root over here and, um, a lot of people don't know this, but it's like, it's like a weed. And so, um, once it gets its little flowers on it, but the bees love the flowers. So I just let it on. And, um, once it does that, then it just takes over and it will grow anywhere. Well, I have it down here and it's growing through our mesh. Um, okay. So let me do the garden tour and then I'll show you how to deadhead flowers, which is really, really, really easy. Um, okay, so over here, my herb bed has just went mad. Um, it's went crazy. And there's a lot of things I need to do. Um, and I'll probably do it when it's a little drier out so my herbs aren't so wet. So I'm going to uh, harvest a lot of this. And I've been, this is feverfew. And I've been harvesting these flowers. I have not used feverfew yet. Um, they say it's like a natural aspirin or I'm not a natural aspirin, I'm a natural um, Advil or ibuprofen so um i haven't used it yet and they say it's really great to use in a tea um so i think eventually i will it's drying and i drew it uh, dried it the most natural way i did not put it in the dehydrator and i will also show you how i did that but over here um i had a turkey um that hatched look they hatched eggs um and my lemon balm and I have oregano over here as well and um yeah so I have that mess I have some hyssop in here um this is broadleaf sage which I haven't picked or anything everything is super wet so I don't want to do that yet um but yeah so most of my flowers are dying out um I do have a lot of sunflowers um sunflowers are also probably the last things to go in the fall um so we have that um, this is Rupert. Yo, what's up, homie? How you doing, Rupe? What's up, buddy? He is so cute, and he is so lovey. Um, he's probably one of the best tame rabbits, um, and we feed him carrots almost every day. I mean, he is just, um, he is a joy. He really is, and his poop is going to be put directly <laughs> in the garden. Hi, Rupe. What's up, Rupert? Oh, hi, honey. Yes, I need a carrot, mommy. So I need a carrot. Yes. He's so cute. <laughs> He's a little wild this morning. He's so cute. Okay, so I still have to harvest some carrots and stuff. Haven't done that yet. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking about waiting until after the frost to do it. But I'm not sure yet. We'll see. Um, I have whorehound down here. And I'm going to harvest some of that. 
Um, yes, most of all of our squash and everything is completely done. Um, I still have tomatoes hanging on and these are the heirlooms and um, after the frost they will they will also be done um, and I'm being overcome by bugs right now uh, mainly the um, leaf-footed nymphs I'm seeing those everywhere um, and it's horrible oh this is really cool spider web where's the spider I don't know but that's really cool um, I hope it gets a leaf-footed nymph in there like if I could I would like totally feed them leaf footed nymphs um I don't see the spider but it looks like he just like made a really cool or she made a really cool nest um but yeah you can kind of see it there um by the looks of it, I don't see any zigzags, so it might not be an orb weaver, but I absolutely love orb weavers, and I welcome, in my, welcome them in my garden. I do see some dead carcasses, though. Look at that. There's a dead fly. So it might be hanging out somewhere where it's not getting wet or it's sleeping because it's still really, really early in the morning, but I'd be really, really happy if that was an orb weaver. Because that's a really, really big nest. Boom. Eat those bugs, baby. Okay, so... Um, yeah, we've kind of let a lot of things go. I had peppers lined up in here. And these are all of my zinnias. They're kind of dying off. Um, it's basically the death of a garden. Um, it's not the once beautiful garden um, that I had. And that's okay. Because next year, it's going to be completely different. And um, I'm already thinking about themes and colors and stuff that I want to put in here. So um, my maple tree is already starting to lose its leaves and turning colors. Oh, Rupert, you are so cute. I wish I could carry you right now. I'd carry you around. You were just so cute. You need a partner in there. You do, Roop. You do. Okay. So, yeah. This is the garden. Oh my gosh, cherry tomatoes. Um, this was a volunteer cherry tomato plant. There were several of them. We let it go. And probably shouldn't have did that. I mean, there's just we can't eat all those. And it doesn't matter if you collect them every day. You still have hundreds of them. So we just had so many. It was ridiculous. Here's some more tomatoes um, that we're probably going to harvest. But we did see a lot of squash bugs, a lot of leaf-footed nymphs on them. And, you know, we're getting towards the end of the year. And, I mean, it, it's just we don't want any more. <laughs> so we're just kind of letting things go. Um, there's bees all over this. Um, for some reason, they really like the lychee tomato. And it, kill, it keeps um, pulling off blooms and stuff like that. So... Um, a lot of tomatoes, blue suede shoes here, another blue suede shoes there. They, these are, um, lychee tomatoes. We got some other ones, some, uh, we planted those stuffing ones this year too, but we didn't eat that many of them. More tomatoes, more tomatoes, more tomatoes. Um, a lot of weeds. We've just been busy and we collect what we can and then we, um, do what we can more these are the carrots you guys that I planted and they're doing great this time of year I mean it's been 55 at night which has been really cool and um the carrots are just eating this up just eating it up I have beautiful beautiful sunflowers this year look at that one color color wise I mean they're just every just everything that I've ever wanted they're just gorgeous and um yeah I have a lot of things going on in here. Oh, it's just crazy. I let a lot of things go to seed and to bloom for the bees. Um, the bees love when, especially when you have your basil and your oregano bloom, um, the bees just love it. So I let a lot of it go to seed and it'll just reseed itself. It's no big deal. Um, cellulosa. I have like all different kinds of things in here. Nasturtium, um, marigolds, sunflowers. I had this huge one that was a volunteer or something. Uh, my roses, those are beautiful. Um, I just have a lot going on in here. 
I have a rogue chicken that every morning she feels the need, that's Lady, she feels the need to come out. She is an Easter egg or an olive egg or something. And she just thinks that she can roam and do whatever she wants. And one of these days she's going to get eaten because she's roaming in the backyard um, and it's not safe. Oh, and there's her follower. That is one of our baby bard rocks. I don't know if you, you probably can't see it. Hold on, let me zoom in. There she is. <laughs> Um, beans. I can't go near them. I'm really allergic and I had to take Benadryl a couple of times. I can eat the beans. I just can't touch the leaves and stuff. And we just have a ton of them in there. Um, especially the purple potted ones. Um, those were really good this year. And, um, I don't know if we're going to can anymore. Um, we're probably going to let a lot of them go for seeds and, um, and that kind of thing. I have a lot of python beans. And if you don't know what those are, check them out on Baker Creek. That's where we got them from. The python bean um, actually has this beautiful flower like that. And it took forever for this thing to, to actually get some beans on it. Um, this is the largest one by far. I don't know if you can see this. Move closer. But that is like the biggest one um, thus far. And um, we're going to try and save seed, seeds from it. Um, and let it get a little bit bigger because the seeds were like five dollars and um, we got like four in a package. They were very expensive. So we're going to try to save some seeds from them. Um, I got some orange mint over here and then I have chocolate mint over there and I'm going to harvest this chocolate mint. I have some bags and stuff to do that. The Grandiro, which is a hybrid tomato, um, paste tomato. It's actually done its best and it'll go clear up until the frost and we have a ton of tomatoes on there yet. And I don't know if we'll be canning or making salsa. I'm not really sure. We'll probably just make salsa like at the end of the year or something. It's just been crazy. Look at all my beans. So it's so crazy. Um, and these, I mean, you can take these, you, you let them get big and let them dry out and they'll hang and dry out. And then, um, the inside of the pod is the seed and, um, then you can plant those next year, but I got to stay clear of the leaves and stuff because I've been, I will, I'll get real itchy. My feet started itching and everything else. It was like really crazy, but yeah. That's what we got so far um, at the end of the year. Okay, so I'm going to teach you how to um, deadhead some flowers, which is really, really easy. Typically, I do this. It's really good to do it in the middle of the day when it's like a little drier out. Um, this is a perfect example. Your zinnias will get flowers are that like this and these will get really really dry when these get really really dry you can pinch these off or cut them off and then you can put these I put them in a paper bag once you put them in a paper bag then um, you can crinkle them up or just let them dry in that bag and um, you can use these seeds for next year and this is the same with marigolds Ooh. <laughs> It's the same with marigolds, and I'm going to see if I can find a dry marigold head for you. In here are the seeds, but it's not dry, so it's really hard. But you can kind of see them in there, and you can take these marigold heads, you can cut them right off, and you can dry those as well. Oh, sorry, honeybee. What's up, dude? Are you taking a break? But yeah, um, you can take those off as well. This is the same with nasturtium. Nasturtium will get seeds on it, and you can save your seeds for nasturtium as well. And I'll show you what those seeds look like. The flower has died off, and this is a nasturtium seed right here. So you can take that. I would prefer that it dried off or dried up first before I clip it off. Um, a lot of times these will fall off, and then you'll get them again next year. But those are the seeds to the nasturtium. And you can take those and you can plant those wherever. I really like this mix. This nasturtium mix. I think this is peach melba. No. I can't remember what this was called. And I have a bunch of it. It was a tall trailing mix and it gets huge. And I had a bunch of it. And the bees love it. 
Um, you can also eat nasturtium. You can eat the leaves and the flowers. Um, it kind of tastes spicy like pepper. So, um, but animals love it and um, the bees love it. However, the bugs don't. Um, the uh, squash bugs and stuff, they do not love that nasturtium and neither do the cu cucumber beetles. So I plant that alongside and this year, I don't know if you saw previous pictures, but I planted that nasturtium along in with my zucchini and I had, I really didn't have an issue with zucchini this year. It was wonderful. But yeah, so that's how you do it, guys. That's how you clip your flowers for the next year if you want to do that. For me, I love them. They're great. And yeah, I probably want to do that. But I'm going to have a different theme next year. So, and I'm one of those people, I like to buy new seeds. Um, I'll save my seeds for different things. But um, I'll probably have whole new flowers set in here for next year. Um, if you look really hard at some of these flowers you could definitely get seed pods and stuff from them and um or figure out where the seeds are and clip them off and use them again for next year these are all seeds and like i said i'm gonna wait till like these are completely dry or wait wait like probably in the afternoon where these have dried up some so my bag isn't all wet when i put them in and yes, I use a paper bag for these. I use a paper bag for a lot of uh, my herbs and stuff. Um, especially, like I said, this feverfew. I will clip these flowers off and then I'll just put them in a paper bag and let them dry naturally. Um, if you do that, they're not cooking or anything in the dehydrator. And you get more of, you get more of what it provides. Does that make sense? Some things are really good to put in a dehydrator and other things are not. If you want more of a flavor, um, the best thing to do with your herbs is to hang them up. And yeah, so this is the garden that's half dead. Okay, so let me show you some of my birds and see if I can get some of my ducks in on this video. And so they are all out. Well, most of them are anyway. Oh, I got another barred rock that thinks they're um, okay to just come on out. Um, these birds are a little bit smaller because they're mixed with a leghorn. Um, I'm pretty sure, though, that one is purebred. I'm not sure, though, because I have a purebred rooster. Um, oh, here comes my ducks. So I'm not really sure. But some of these are extra small because they were mixed with a leghorn, and they're smaller birds. Here's Charlie and Spike. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Spike. They're all wet. Hi, Charlie. You're looking handsome. Oh, hi, babies. <laughs> oh, hi, Rico. Hi, Suave. Oh, here are the Huey, Louie, and Dewey, or whatever. Aren't they different? Okay, so if you think you're an expert, tell me which one is female. Tell me which one is male. I can tell you right away by looking, but... If you think you can tell, you go ahead. <laughs> oh, hi, lady. You're just a butthead. Why are you out? You're teaching the other ones to come out. Is there a hole in the fence that I need to know about? Hi, lady. <laughs> um, this is all dirty because the birds get up here. It's gross. Um, I got two khaki Campbells. And um, here's the rest of the flock here. They're starting to molt. It's that time of year. People are starting to lose their feathers. There is a speckled Sussex down there. That's the only one I've got. Used to have a couple of them. There's Ted. Hi, Ted. He looks mad. <laughs> he looks very mad. But these are my birds. These are, and I got, oh my gosh, you guys, I have so many more. It's been absolutely crazy. Oh, there's Val. What's up, Val? Oh, doing the dance. He's running away from the turkeys. What's up, Val? Wow. He's a handsome guy. But there are my ducks right there. You can tell me which one is female. <laughs> They're so cute. They think I'm going to feed them. I don't have anything for you guys. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> but they're so adorable. I love my animals. I love them. Even my gross chickens. They're gross sometimes. Hey, Val. Ooh, stud muffin. Look at you. They're having the best time. Now, you probably are wondering where my female turkey is, right? I got one. She hatched an egg. So let's go and we'll see if we can get her to come out and we'll see. So we put her in the uh, tractor here so that she could be safe. Um, I had one turkey that was sitting in the spring on a clutch of eggs and a fox took her out and I felt horrible. So um, we put her in this. Um, she's safer in this and she's been sitting on her baby in here. And I'm really hoping and praying that other that baby is a female because we really need females versus the males. I'm going to open this up a little bit, see if I can get her. There she is. You can't see the baby. She's sitting on it. But I put, <laughs> I put some tomatoes in there yesterday. So she had some fresh food and we've been putting some other stuff in there. Um, and then every day we move this. Um, so she has fresh grass um, to be on. But she hides in there, hides in the back. And I have pictures of her and her baby. So um, I'll show you that in this video. Okay, guys, that was pretty much it. Um, I will probably have some more fall cleanup videos and stuff for you coming up in the future. Um, I also have um, some products that I need to review for you um, that I got chosen to do. Um, and they just came in the mail. I got three packages in the mail to do some product reviews for you. So we'll be doing that as well. <sighs> and that's uh, pretty much it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. I hope I taught you something. If you have any questions, you can always message me. And um, we'll see you all in the next video or the next live. Have a good one, guys. Bye.